guys. I'm going to wait just a couple of minutes so people can jump on. Um, I'm just going to, I have to make a flare for the swap we're having on my swap group. And I just figured I would sew it all up um, on here with you guys. So <laughs> this is a bag stock um, designs pattern. And I do have a full tutorial for it on my channel. That's not a live. If you were like, I don't want to see this live or I want to see it pre-recorded. It's already on there pre-recorded. Hello. Yay. I'm just putting on my name plate and my snaps just so this goes a little bit faster. Hi guys. I know it's the middle of the day and a lot of people are working. I apologize for that. My kids are still in school, so it's probably it's the last week of school, so it's probably like the last quiet daytime time that I have. <laughs> Hello guys. Hi Donna. Yay. And if I don't get anybody that's a moderator hopping on here, I may ask somebody to volunteer to moderate for me so we don't get any crazy uh, people. Nicole, you're a moderator. No, you're not late. Caitlin, yay. Okay. <laughs> I've got a couple. Let me turn off the bathroom fan real quick. It's really loud. Just a second. Okay. Okay. Yay. Here we go. Oh. Mine isn't working on this side. I hope it's all working for you. I can't get all the comments pulled up. Yes, this is, I think it's terracotta. It's from Bodio. I'm using this just, it's like not white, but not gray. Um, and this one is from My Punk Broidery. And then I am using, I love this print. This is uh, the Home Body Collection. And I bought it off of Hawthorne Threads. And those are really the only materials I'm using. I interfaced with Decaville Light. I kept it out of, I'm keeping it out of the top of this bag because you're doing a full zipper enclosure on this bag and you don't want this to be um, thick up at top at all. So if you're doing foam, make sure that you cut it out of your seam allowance up at the top on all your pieces. Um, that's important on this bag, I think, or else it's going to be bulky and it's going to be hard for you to sew um, with. So let me see if I can pull this up again. Sorry, guys. I don't know why it's not wanting to be my friend today. <laughs> Where is it? Okay. Yay, hopefully that worked. Hmm. Okay, yay. I don't know why I can't get the video up, but I can see all your comments. So just holler at me if the video part's not working. The flare is a fun one, uh, Marion. It's not too hard, I don't think. There's not a lot of pieces to it. It goes together pretty nicely. It's a super cute, smaller crossbody bag. And not a lot of hardware needed either. So I'm gonna move everything in. And I'm taking it, all of you have a good picture, even though I can't get mine to work. I don't know what is going on with my internet, so. 
I'll try one more way. Let's see. I'm so sorry. Ask me questions. Picture is great. You can see and hear me. Okay. Here it is. Maybe it'll work now. Huh. I don't know. It says I have an error. I don't know why. Okay. Well, I can see your comments. So that's good. <laughs> as long as your guys' picture is working, that's all I care about. All right. I'm going to bring it in right here by my machine. Let me know how this angle is for you. So you're not going to see my face for most of this. Um, I figured you'd rather see my machine than my face. <laughs> okay, good. It's all, all right. Okay, again, here we are with the flare. So I am basically going to follow the same steps as the pattern. I will try and not stop along the way. I will try and answer questions and talk to you guys, but I do try and get this all done in one sitting if possible. All right, so I have already put my snaps and my nameplate on my front piece here, and I've protected it. You can use interfacing, you can use duct tape, whatever works for you. A little closer, okay, just a second. Here we go. Oh, I better plug in my um, device or else it will die in the middle of my video too. All right, here we go. All right, we're all set. So this is my front slip pocket piece and this is my inside slip pocket piece. So I'm gonna take those right sides together and I am going to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance on most of this pattern. It's a 3 8 throughout most of it. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't sewn up this bag in quite a while, so um, bear with me if I make a mistake here and there. There, maybe that's a little bit better. Is that good? Hello from Sweden. Super cool. All right, so you take that and you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna top stitch that. Get my clips down. And I just do a good finger press because I'm using mostly vinyl on this bag and faux leather, so I don't wanna um, iron it or anything like that. Okay, here we go. All right, just like that, that's what you should have. And I'm going to top stitch that. And I usually sew, every sewing machine stitch length is different. Um, I usually piece together everything between a four and a four and a half, depending if I'm using vinyl or cotton. And then I top stitch between a five and a five and a half. I know that's a question people are always asking. Hello. Oh, good. I'm so glad. All right. So you have that. And then you want to take your... Tried to have all my pieces sitting here. Your exterior front, bottom, middle panel. And we're gonna put that right on top. I'm actually gonna do it this way. So just line that all up and we're gonna baste that on. And that makes our cute little slip pocket for the front. Hello from Germany. What time is it in Germany? I feel like the middle of the day here is great for all the other countries. Seems to catch everybody else at a good time. Just basting that on. Okay. So I've got a nice little slip pocket there. All right. So next I wanna put on my side panels. Okay, I've got two of those and they should be mirrored. So when you cut them, you should have two mirrored pieces. All right. And you are gonna sew those on again at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. 
Hi, Denise. Yes, you did. Hi, Connie. Oh, I'm glad you could make it. Lots of people. Yay. All right. So a three eighths. Feel free to ask me questions. I'll try and answer them as I go along. If I see them, if I miss them, just ask it again. I try to keep looking up and looking at it. Seven. Yeah, it's the evening in a lot of places, which works out good, huh? All right, so you want to press the seam allowance out, and I'm going to top stitch through that on this side panel. Hello from Indonesia. Wow. So cool. So many different places. I have actually never made this one with a vinyl and Decaville like this. I think my last one was vinyl and cotton and I used foam. So this is actually the first time for me doing it this way. And I wasn't sure about all of this Decaville being in my seam allowance. Um, so I'll let you know <laughs> what I think when it gets closer to the end. I think it'll be okay because I have an industrial, but if you're sewing on a domestic, I would definitely keep it out of your seam allowances. All right, go ahead and repeat for the other side. Hello, Pascal. Oh, thanks, Connie. I'm so glad. That's my whole goal is to help people learn what I've learned. I am using a um, polyester bonded text 70 thread. This is actually the kind I sell on my website that I'm using right now. It's my white. And I think it's probably my favorite thread to use now. I really like it. All right, I'm top stitching through all those layers. You're not late, Lori. We just got going. Okay, so there, oh, it's cute. There is my cute white front panel. And I think next we're gonna work on the flap, okay. All right, I've got this flap. I am using both sides, my faux um, leather vinyl. And I did do Decaville out of my seam allowances on one of them. And then I put my snap on as well. Okay, so there's the other part of my snap. So I'm going to put this together. And this is again, let's see, yep, three eighths. And I'm gonna sew along these sides and not the top, because then you need to turn it through the top. And get that clipped, it's kind of slippery. Connie, I order my labels from Alibaba. All right, let's go ahead and sew these flaps together, 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna kinda go slow here around my curve. I'm not using any floral today, surprisingly. <laughs> totally out of character for me but this is for a swap and she wanted something neutral so I think this is pretty neutral all right hi Cindy from California all right so I like to use some pinking shears um where do I sell the thread? I sell it on my website, which is siaswagbags.com. No www in front of it, just siaswagbags.com. I will link everything when the video is done. I just didn't have enough time beforehand. Okay, so that is my flap. I'm gonna turn it out. Hi, Kalisha. 
How you doing? Thank you, Caitlin. I like these colors too. I think they're gonna look really nice. I am excited. All right. I'm just gonna kind of push out all of my edges here and I will top stitch this flap. corners nice and pushed out. Okay, so there's my flap. I'm gonna go ahead and just top stitch around the outside of this flap and I can go ahead and baste it shut too if I want to, which I probably will. So I'll change my seam allowance again here. Um, Kasaya, do you know anything? No, Donna, I don't know anything about that machine model. A great place to ask questions like that is on my Facebook group, though, Saya Swag Bags. There are so many awesome people on there that will help you out if they have that machine. I find people are so willing to help and answer on my group. It's awesome. Oh, Margaret, I'm so glad. Hi, Casey from Lexington. Okay, and then I'm just going to close up my top here. All right, so there's my little cute little flap, front, back. All right, we want to baste this onto here. What I do is I put my snap on first, get your snap on there and make sure everything looks straight wherever you're gonna baste it. You may have a little bit of an overhang and that's fine. You just wanna make sure that flap attaches nicely there. Okay, so that's where my flap is going. Hi, crafty Jeep girl. Oh, <laughs> Shelby from Idaho. Okay. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna do it from this side just because I can't really see what the edge of my panel is on this side, so I'm flipping it over so I can baste it. And it does look, yeah, that looks right. Okay. So I'm just basting that on. And I'll trim my extra little flap down just a little bit. Where are my scissors? There they are. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Rhonda. All right, so there is my my front panel. I like it. That's cute. My snap is there. We're good. So next we want to get our zipper, which I am doing this zipper. And I like my bags to open from left to right. Some people are the other way around. I don't, I don't think there's a wrong or a right way for it. I feel like it's just preference. I am going to do a couple of really tiny snips in my zipper so I know where the center is. Margaret, yes, I do have one and a half inch swivel hooks in stock. Hi, Leticia. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay. So I am going, oh, I need to mark my center on here too. Hello from Brazil. In Canada, so many different countries. It's so awesome. This one's a little bit harder to mark. All right. Here we go. So you want to do your zipper face down. So right sides together on your zipper and your panel. 
And I am just going to baste that on first. All the way across. All right, just like that. Do I ever tire from making bags? Um, yes, sometimes. It doesn't happen that often though. I think I tired of clothes making and quilting way quicker than making bags. I do have to take breaks, which I actually have been taking a break the past few days and it's been nice. Oh, thank you. Sunny Wisconsin, hello. All right. Hi, Sue. Oh no, <laughs> now you need to go get that pattern, Leticia. <laughs> okay, so just like that, and then you wanna take your pocket, and we're going to put it right sides together with our panel that we just did, and we are going to sew our pocket on. Now she has in the pattern a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I usually cannot do a 3 8 inch seam allowance unless I switch to a zipper foot. I think it all depends on your machine, so I usually just do a fourth. So I may have to trim my panel down just a little bit when I'm all done, and that's fine. You just want to make sure that it's the same size as your back and front. Like you want to make sure your two panels are the same size. Um, who's in the car with me, Serenity? It's, yeah, it's my sister. <laughs> That's my sister, Susan. She's awesome. She's the one that wrote all of my cool jingles and music and everything. Sorry, I got distracted when I had to pull this. I need to redo it, just a minute. Let me pull it more out of the way. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna flip that up and this. So you're going to want to press this up. You want your flap up and my zipper is pressed up and my pocket piece is down and I am going to top stitch along here with my seam allowance going down and my flap is lying up. So hopefully that makes sense. Nicole, are you the only two girls? Me and my sister, yes. It's me and my sister and then I have two brothers. So my sister and I are pretty close. And then I want to increase my seam allowance because I'm top stitching this. And mine is kind of thick because of all the vinyl and everything I'm using. So right here, I'm going to help my foot get over this um, seam by just folding a piece of, this is just some faux leather. I'm just folding that underneath and it's gonna help it come over this bump. But then I need to put it back under so it doesn't scrape right there too. Okay, if you have a walking foot, a scrap piece of leather is your best friend. Um. <laughs> Barb, I know what you're talking about, that's funny. <laughs> some people hate that I greet everybody and some people like it, so. <laughs> 
What type of needle? This is a size 18 needle that I am using right now because of all the vinyl that I am using. Just gonna help my foot over again. I just really don't want to tear my vinyl right here. Okay. All right, so that is what that top stitching looks like. So now your flap has a little bit of, you know, it kind of sticks out a little bit and it's not just laying completely flat against your back, which I think is what you want. All right, next step. Sorry, let me move on here. <laughs> All right, so I wanna take this back of my zipper panel pocket, my zipper panel pocket, I guess. And I am putting it on the other raw end of my zipper. And I'm going to baste that on there. Okay, I'm going to baste that onto the top part here. It's just a little hard with this big old zipper hole. If you Woo, flying clip. Um, if you don't want to deal with your zipper pull, you can make your zipper way longer and keep your pull all the way to the side the whole time and then trim up your zipper, or you can add your zipper on after you're done. So those are two options if you get annoyed by that zipper pull, which I kind of do. I should probably do that more often. <laughs> Okay, so that's what you have so far. There's your zipper pocket, and then we want to add our top panel piece, which is this right here. And I did do Decaville light on it, and I'm keeping it out of my top seam because, again, we are putting a zipper closure on the very top, and I don't want that extra bulk on the top of it. If you're using foam, do the same thing. All right. So there's my center. Let me clip my center real quick. Just so I have it lined up. What fabric is the white? It's a vinyl from Bodio. Vinyl from Bodio. And the brown is from, no, vinyl from My Punk, sorry. My Punk Broidery is the white. The brown is terracotta from Bodio. Yeah, that's right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew that on there at, I'm doing a fourth, which means I'm probably gonna have to trim this up again, which is fine, okay? I'm going to flip this up and I'm going to top stitch through that. What level of sewing for this pattern? I would say it's probably like, um, a beginner to intermediate. It does have a gusset on it. You know what? I need to sew this a little bit closer. Just a minute. I didn't get close enough. I'm gonna try just a little bit closer. I mean, it is a 
small bag, but it has these pockets, it has the gusset, and it has the full zipper closure on the top, which I think makes it a little bit more challenging. But as I always say, I feel like if you go slow and take your time, you can do any bag. It's all just steps. Everything, every bag is just steps. What's my favorite vinyl marine? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite actually. I've tried so many different kinds. I don't know if I could even, I don't know if I could even say which one is my favorite because there's so many. All right, so once you have that all done, I'm going to baste it all together. My zipper is a tiny bit funky right there, but I think it's okay. All right, I'm going to baste this shut. It'll, it'll close up my zipper and it'll close up my zipper pocket. Oh, I just, my thread just broke. Hold please. You're not too late, Maria. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. All fixed. The Facebook group, Donna, is Saya Swagbacks. That's all it's called, Saya Swagbacks. My pocket's just a little bit off. Make sure I get it closed up here. All right. Should be good. There's my front panel. Ooh, it's cute. All right. Thank you. Brittany just did the link for the Facebook group. So if you aren't doing Decaville and you're doing foam, you would put the foam on this piece now if you hadn't interfaced it beforehand. I interfaced my pieces individually. So I don't need to do that. I am going to see if this piece is bigger and it's a tiny bit bigger. Do you see that? Because I used a different seam allowance than the three eighths, but not by much, like about a fourth inch bigger. So I will have to trim that down just a fourth inch. All right, I'll do that real quick. Michelle, oh, thank you so much. All right, I'm just gonna trim this down a tiny, tiny bit, a little less than a fourth, and then that should be the same size as my back panel. All right, so easy fix if that's what you have to do. All right, my front, my back, we're gonna put those aside. And we're gonna work on our inside. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going out of step. I'm gonna do my gusset. I'm gonna do the connectors on my gusset. Here we go. So let me just forward through here for a minute. Like I said, I haven't made this in a, in a, in a hot minute, so I have to read what I'm doing. All right. So you want your connectors. I already did my connectors. I'm doing one inch on this. I'm doing a three fourths inch crossbody strap, but I did one inch connectors here. So I'm doing one and a fourth down from the top for my placement. All right. So I sewed my raw edges in and I folded my raw edges into the middle and down with my connector on it. Okay, that's how it's done in a lot of bags. It's nothing, 
nothing different. Oh, thank you so much. Goga4610. <laughs> thank you. Get that centered on there as best you can. Okay, that seems about right to me. And I am going to sew. I like to do a box with an X through it. So that's what I'm going to do on this. You could do rivets. You could just do around the edges. I feel like this part is just however you like to do your connectors. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh, hello, Christiana from Germany. Thank you. So definitely protect your vinyl and your hardware. Here, I'm going to move. Oops, sorry. I'm just moving you guys in a little bit more here. Okay, right there, or else it will eat up your vinyl if you have a walking foot. Kelly, how do I balance? <laughs> Well, I don't have much time for myself lately, actually. <laughs> I have a very helpful family and a helpful husband. That's how I do everything. And my housework goes to crap a lot of the times because I have too many other things going on. <laughs> All right, again, I'm protecting that vinyl back there along my hardware, and I'm gonna do like an X through the middle of my connector. Yeah, my family's awesome. You know what, I've been a mom for 20 years, and I stayed at home with them for 20 years. And now it's my time to do my thing, and they've been super supportive. <laughs> Who needs it? Who needs a clean house anyways? I agree. It's overrated. <laughs> All right, so there's your connector. You could put rivets through it. I'm not going to. This is just a small crossbody, so I don't feel like... It needs it. You can totally do it though, especially if you just want that look, you know, with the rivet. So I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna repeat for the other side here. All right, one and a fourth, right? One and a fourth, yeah. One and a fourth down. And repeat. About right there. Looks good. All right, sew that second one on. What kind of marking pen? I use this um, Soline Air Erasing. It is on my Amazon list. I will post that in the description. When I'm all done, I'll update all of my links and everything I'm using, and I'll put that in there. It's one of my favorite marking pens, for sure. All right, 
There, got my connectors on, so I don't have to worry about coming back to do that. Okay, so you should have both of them hooked on there. Okay, so I'll go back to the pattern. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, let me get my next pieces. Move them over. Okay, so I am, oh, thank you, Brittany. Yep, there's the list for my Amazon shop and I have all of the products that I use on there and this pin is on there. Thank you, Debbie. All right, so I am doing the zipper pocket a little bit different. I'm just using one whole piece instead of the two pieces with the zipper facing. Um, this is, I don't know if there's, the other way makes it so the inside of your pocket looks nicer and you don't have any raw edges. That is the difference between the two types of pockets and I just don't always really care that I have raw edges inside of my zipper pocket because nobody sees it. So it's up to you. You can do the zipper facing method or you could just do it this way. So I just drew a box one inch down and one inch around everything there, okay? And then I'm gonna take my, my lining piece. I'm a, what is this? <laughs> it's my lining piece. Mark my center here. And let's see. Hello from Michigan. Sorry. Look how far down I need to go. One inch. All right, so you want one inch down from the top. There's my middle, there's my one inch. Hello from South Africa, thank you. Netherlands, that's just so crazy. Okay, so I just kind of line everything up there. That's one inch down, I have it all centered. All right, I'm gonna sew around this rectangle and then I'll cut it out. And I use a pretty small stitch. Now there are a couple different methods to this. You can just sew two parallel lines or you can do the whole rectangle around it. I think I'm gonna do the whole rectangle. I'm gonna heat up my iron too while I'm thinking of it. Get it hot for pressing this when I cut it out. Okay, here we go. And if you're wondering how to do the method with the zipper facing, I have done it on so many different videos, seriously. Like I haven't done it this way in a long time because I've been trying to follow patterns. So yeah, if you're wondering, just go back a couple videos where there's a zipper pocket and I show that method. Once you do it once you get it and it's not that hard. It's the same for pretty much everyone. Okay. Hello, Aline. I'm horrible at names, guys. Okay. So I am going to cut this out. I do a line through the middle. And then I do a little Y shape from the corner in. Try not to cut your stitching where you just did. If you do cut your stitching, it's not the end of the world. Just stitch again right next to it and you'll be fine. I have been known to do that before, so it happens. All right. Yeah, this is just the faster way. You're right. Pull it through. This is the first way I ever learned how to do my zips and my pockets. So it's just, I feel like it's the easiest. Not a lot of pieces, just one big piece. I will be cutting this. Um, in half when it gets in because I want to be able to have my pocket open. OK, 
Okay, so that's what it looks like from the back. That's the front. I'm just gonna press it real quick with my iron. Just a second. As I say, hold please. <laughs> okay. There we go. There's my zipper pocket. How do I get the corner of the zipper pocket to lay flat? Um, practice? <laughs> I'm not sure. I know there's a couple of different methods out there. It's just cotton that I'm using. It is not anything fancy this time around. I think I didn't want to use waterproof canvas on this bag because when I have the full zipper enclosure up at the top like this bag is, I feel like when I use waterproof canvas, it makes it a little bit more difficult for it to lay nice and to top stitch. Um, so I used a canvas. If it was a recessed zipper, I would have used waterproof canvas. I mean, so I use a cotton. Is that what I said? I'm sorry. Maybe I'm not making sense. Major steam, there you go. Brittany, yeah, me too. I find it a little bit easier. Okay, so I just put double-sided tape. I'm gonna stick my zipper in here. And then I'll close up my pocket. Bada boom, bada bing. Again, I like my zippers to go from left to right. Not all people do. I think it depends on what country you live on to tell you the truth. Some people like it the other way, I don't know. Okay, so just get that in there as nice as you can. Front, back. Now I'm gonna sew around it um, rectangle just an eighth of an inch away from that zipper. And I'm using like a five, five and a half stitch length here. You wanna use a kind of bigger one. <laughs> You're fine, it's Monday, yeah. Seriously. We are going out of town this week, so I really wanted to get a video up here for you guys. And I really needed to get this bag done. <laughs> if I have time, I was going to do the new country cow pattern from Joe, the two leger. Is that how she says it? The two leger 2.0. It's super cute. And I really wanted to sew that one up too this week. We'll see how productive I am. My thread weight is poly bonded, polyester bonded text 70 thread. And I sell this thread on my website. Okay, so now that my zipper is in, I'm going to pull this pocket up to the top here. I'm gonna sew this up first on the top and then I'm cutting my pocket open. All right. Hello, Sue. Awesome. In Belgium, awesome. Thanks, Brittany. My needle size is 18. All right, here we go. <laughs> Don't worry about pronouncing your name, okay? <laughs> I, it's funny because people pronounce my name horribly wrong all the time as well, and I do the same to other people, so it's awesome. All right. So I sewed that shut along the top, and now I'm going to cut it open. So if you're doing it the way the pattern is, you're don't have to cut it open because it's two pieces. But because I'm doing it this way, I have to cut my bottom open. I'm gonna fold it up like this. 
I'm just going to finger press it because it finger presses really nicely. Can that thread be used on a domestic? I'm not sure. Some domestics um, can handle it and some can't. It depends on your machine. Some people use it just in their top and not in their bobbin on their domestic and it works great for top stitching, but I am not knowledgeable as to which machines it does work for besides industrials. It works for industrials for sure. Okay, so I'm going to just sew my sides together and I'm leaving the bottom of my pocket open. Come on, bobbin, there we go. Okay. go. You've got your pocket done there. And now I'm going to do my slip pocket on my other side. So I have two pieces for that. I'm going to go right sides together and I'm going to stitch along the top. What do I do with all the bags I make? I sell them and then I keep the ones I like for myself. <laughs> I give a lot away to, to family and friends. Right now, the bag I'm using is the Momexa that I made in my last video. I kept that one for myself and that is my current bag. I have lots of favorites. Lots of favorite designs. Yeah, where the kids get them. Charlotte has like 20 different bags that she uses that I've made. <laughs> All right, flip that over and top stitch. My sister gets a lot of the bags I make too. She has a lot of my slings. Get your other lining piece here and stick that on there and we are going to divide this pocket down the center and then sew it all on. So let me find the center. I did mark it here. Here's my top. And there's my bottom. Okay. Here we go. We'll sew on this slip pocket. And I do the whole sewing on and dividing all at the same time. Sorry, let me go just right there. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go up and come right back down. And I go along the same line and just give it that double stitch, double reinforcement. There's our linings. All right, so next we're gonna put on our gussets, guys. We are cruising right along. So there's my two lining pieces, yay. All right, I need a drink, just a second. All 
Okay, so let's do our outside. Here we go. So I have clipped the centers here. I have not clipped the centers here. Let me do that. I wanna clip the centers on everything, always. A big believer in that. All right, I'm going to move you out just a little bit while I put this together. All right, here we go. So you definitely want to trim up your, or not trim up, um, we're gonna clip our curves on this to make our gusset fit nicely. That is a definite must on this. I'm just trimming my zipper so it's flush here. Oh, that's great. Here we go. I make those curves look easy. Oh, it's taken me a lot of trial and error to figure out how to do curves. It's just a lot of practice. My first curves were not that pretty at all. Watch this one come out horribly. You guys are gonna jinx me. <laughs> gonna jinx me. All right, so I go center first, and then I come up to the top here, and I come down, and then I'm gonna clip my curves, okay? Very important to clip your curves on this one. <laughs> Lori, it's okay. We'll see if you do or not. <laughs> Here we go. Angie, you're here. I'm just doing the gussets. Okay, so do you see how this is laying here? You cannot pin that or clip it on unless you clip it. So definitely do some clips. Now, we only have a 3 8 inch seam allowance, so make sure your clips do not exceed that 3 8 inch seam allowance or you'll, you'll be screwed. You don't wanna do that. All right. Just like that. I don't know, it's so hard to show sometimes. All right, so now you wanna fit. This is a tight, tight curve and a tight gusset, guys. It's a little one, right? It's not a big gradual, it's a little one, but you can do it. You can also staple it. I know I've shown that once or twice. You can staple this and keep it in place for sewing. I'll show you right here. Look at this. I have just this little Walmart stapler. Keep within your seam allowance, super close to your edges. And you can put a little staple, oh, sorry. <laughs> you can put a little staple in it like that and then make sure you cut it out afterwards and that'll hold it in place as well. Brandy, did I order the chunky zipper pulls? I sure did. I ordered a hundred of each finish of each of those ones I posted. So I didn't order a ton, but we'll see how people like them first. I think they're awesome, personally. I have a lot of zipper pulls coming. Different designs. All right, now my other very helpful tip for doing these gussets is to have a stiletto. One of these tools, 
It helps you when you're sewing the curves, keeping everything in place and not worrying about sewing over your fingers, which is helpful. And I'm going to move this. Just a second. I'm going to move you guys to the other side for the gusset because I feel like you can see better that way. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, let's move you over this way. Yeah, that's a better angle for this gusset part. Here we go. So a 3 8 inch for this gusset. And here we go. I won't talk much during this part because <laughs> I'm concentrating. <laughs> All right. And I always like to sew gusset side up. I feel like you have better control and can see what you're doing a little bit better. kind of shape it and manipulate it here with your other hand. It works well. There we go. All my clips are falling. All right, so if you've watched my videos before, let me look real quick. Yep, it looks good. So I am going to do a second row of stitching right to the right of this row. The reason I do that is it helps when you turn the bag out with the pulling of your stitching on the outside so you don't see those, those stitches. Um, I hope that makes sense. I am not going to start it up at the top. I'm going to start it a little bit down because I want this to be able to lay flat, my seam allowance. So if I start up here, it won't lay as flat. So I am going to start a little bit farther down and I'm going to do another row of stitching. Um, this stiletto is Mary Beth made it and it's a double one. It's super pretty. I really like it. She has a group on Facebook as well, Mary Beth made it. And she does super cute stuff. Pens and stilettos, seam rippers, yeah. Another one I really like is called Quill and Hive. And that's my other big chunky one. It's over on my cutting table, but um, that's an Etsy shop and they do all handmade ones too and they're awesome. After you get that on, you want to trim your seam allowance down. I'm going to do pinking shears around, oh, don't fall on me camera, around my curve here, just because it's such a tight little curve. I feel like that will help. I've got that staple in the way now. 
which is why I don't love doing staples. All right. And then I'm gonna do it around my other curve here. Come on. All right. And then I will trim the rest down to about a fourth. I am not starting until I get past my zipper here because I don't want my zipper to fray and I don't want it to be too short there. Okay, just like that. I know I say that a lot too. <laughs> All right, so we want to go ahead and repeat those steps and do your back. All right. Get my back piece here. And I have my centers clipped already. So just go ahead and repeat all the same steps. There we go. And I feel like um, the second, the other side is always a little bit harder than the first side because you just have more to maneuver under your machine and more to squish. So just be aware that this other side might be a little bit more difficult. So just go slow. Go. And I think for this pattern, I am going to leave the bottom of my lining open and I'm going to pull the whole bag through my lining first and then close up my lining through my pocket. I really like that method. It's my favorite, I think. So that is one other thing I'm slightly changing on this pattern, but it's not a big thing. Is everybody else's picture okay? I'm sorry. I can't see a picture. It's not working on my end, so. <laughs> oh, my clicking sound effect. It's so funny. I never like knew I did all these things over and over again until people point them out. And I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> so I'm sorry. You just don't realize all your little quirks until they're pointed out to you by somebody else. <laughs> I do click a lot. <laughs> You're right, Sarah. <laughs> uh, how far away do I sew the second line? Um, it is seriously like, I mean, not even an eighth of an inch away from it, Nicole. It's right next to it. Enough that you're not sewing over it. So just right next to that line. Okay, get this back on here. This side's a little easier because you don't have as much bulk from that whole front pocket, you know? So this corner is easier, but actually sewing it on is a little bit harder because of how much you have with the whole bag. I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay, so we have the second side all clipped on. So I'm gonna do it, my gusset side up and we're gonna sew that side on now. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm human, yes, I'm, I'm very human, guys. <laughs> all right, here we go. I hope the lighting's okay. All right. Let's go. I'm doing about a four and a half inch um, or a four and a half on my stitch length because 
When you're sewing leather or vinyl, well, especially vinyl, you don't want a really short stitch length. It will pierce your vinyl and it'll tear it. Like if your stitches are too small. Does that make sense? Because you're making tiny little holes and the holes will just completely rip your vinyl if your stitch length is too small. So that's something to be aware of too when you're sewing things like this. Oh, you just got up. Nice, Chris. Well, good morning to you. It is afternoon here. All right. See what I mean? It's just a little bit, you've got a little bit more to um, maneuver when you do the other side. So just take your time, try and get it nice and flat here on your curve. That's the part that took me the longest and sometimes I still just totally screw that part up. So don't be discouraged with yourselves on your curves. It seriously is, it's not the easiest thing. But this stiletto tool, I'm telling you what, it helps because you kind of can hold it down and you can smooth out your wrinkles a little bit with it right here. You see that, how I'm kind of pressing down my vinyl and smoothing out what other, whatever wrinkles I have. It really is a helpful little tool to have. Watch, I'll have a big old wrinkle in it. <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, love my Cardi kids. Exactly, guess how I know that too. <laughs> I tell you, I'm just telling you guys. <laughs> from experience for the most part. So yes, I made that mistake too with the short stitches. Okay. Where are my little scissors? Oh, they're hanging up where they're supposed to be. Yes, Chris is just like having another hand. It is so nice. If you haven't bought a stiletto, go get one. All right, so I'm doing that little second line of stitches real quick for me because I think it helps. Especially, I mainly just do it on my outside pieces. I don't ever do it on my inside pieces because they're cotton and you don't need it. So just the outside. Okay. I'm gonna trim that up and then we will put together our, our lining piece, yay. Where do I buy my zipper poles? Um, I use a lot of the ones that I sell on my site and then I, uh, one of the big ones on this one is from Mormino, Lauren Mormino's site. I really like it, it's one of her big chunky ones. And then my handmade space. Those are probably my most commonly um, used poles that I have. And I don't cut all the way up to the top. Um, because I want my seam allowance to lay flat. And if you have a really short seam allowance, it's harder to get it to lay flat. So I never mess with this top seam up here. I leave it. So I start trimming a little bit down. Okay, so there is my inside all done. I think it looks cute. All right, so let's do our lining. Okay, there we go. So I like to leave, when I do leave my lining and I'm pulling it through my zipper pocket, I like to leave it open on the opposite panel. So this is my pocket panel with my zipper pocket. So I'm gonna completely sew this gusset on and then I will be leaving a hole on the other side 
of my lining and the gusset. Okay, so you just clip this on the exact same way. And I think we're going to increase our seam allowance on this one to get it to fit a little bit better. I will double check, but I'm pretty positive that's what we're doing. What time is it? 1.18? We're doing good, guys. We're doing good. I like to keep my lives under two hours. I think we can do it. <laughs> Hi from Greece. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. All right, I'm gonna have to clip and let me look. What does it say? Yep, you're gonna increase your seam allowance on this to a 5 8 okay, as you go. So these clips can be a little bit bigger along your gusset. in there. And then this side. What does message retracted mean? It means somebody wrote something and then they decided, whoops, I didn't want to say that. And they took it back. That's what message retracted means. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna sew all the way around this. I'm gonna start at a three eighths. I'm gonna come down an inch or two. Probably I will wait till I get past my pocket here. I will hold my pocket in. Um, I don't think it'll be in my seam allowance, but um, I'm going to come down a couple and then I will increase it to a 5 eighths inch. And then you have to remember to go back to that 3 eighths inch along the other side so your tops line up correctly. All right, here we go. A little bit smaller stitch length on, ah, my pedal went crazy. <laughs> I don't always have control of it, guys. Okay, go to that 5 eighths. Make sure you're not sewing any pockets in there with it. And it's a little bit harder because your pattern isn't really made for having that bigger seam allowance, so it's harder to get the material to lay flat. Somebody told me if you trim the gusset, I think, down a little bit, you don't have that issue. Is that correct? Does somebody remember how to avoid that? I think that was it, though. It's especially hard when you're using waterproof canvas and have to increase your seam allowance like this. It just gets so wrinkly. Again, I'm trying really hard not to have those wrinkles. If I can help it. Not perfect. Pretty good though. All right. Yeah, cut down the lining gusset. I think that's the trick. It helps the corners and the whole gusset fit better if you cut the gusset down a little bit. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. I should have tried it on this, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna trim my, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna trim my lining down there. 
a fourth inch shorter on both sides. All right, that's something to try. I'll have to try that. I'll let you guys know how that goes. <laughs> Okay, and then we're gonna get our second side here. A projector for cutting patterns, nope. That's pretty cool. I never print out all my instructions. I only print out my pattern pieces usually, and I keep the rest on my computer. All right, so for this one, I'm leaving my bottom open. Oh, Serenity, I'm glad. I'll try and get your order out quickly. Okay. Clip your gusset. I do have a projector. I bought one thinking it would be nice to use for these lives and stuff to project the pattern up so I wasn't looking at the computer and I haven't hooked it up yet. Okay, other side. All right. Here we go. So I am going to leave pretty much this whole bottom open to pull the bag through. And here we go. Start at that three eighths and increase. Yeah, I think if you were to trim the gusset down, I think that sounds about right. A fourth, I bet that would be so much better on these linings. Because you just have too much to work with here. All right, I'm stopping there. I'm coming all the way over here. I'm gonna start about right here. All right, and then go back to that three eighths up at the top. There we go. And then trim 
your sides down, but do not trim your bottom down if you're leaving it open because you need that to close up the bag. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Eunice. All right. What did I miss? Anything? All right, here we go. I'm gonna look inside, give it a feel. Okay, it's good. Let's see, last thing we need to do before we put it all together is the zipper top closure. All right, so there's my body. Let's go to the zipper top closure. Here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, your fingers get pretty close. That's why the stiletto is good, but I haven't sewn over a finger yet. Knock on wood. All right, so I have my zipper and I've already sewn down my one inch 90 degree angle there and just tacked it down. And then I put my end cap on already. All right. So what we're doing is we are going to attach it to our main body piece. And I need this right side out, I guess. Um, Anna, that is a great idea. I have been told that before and I always forget when you're doing the lining, just sew it at the regular seam allowance first and then increase it. I think that's a great idea. I should have done that too. So many things, guys. Yes, all great ideas. Oh no, Kelly, you sewed your finger. I'm so sorry. How does the zipper end? The zipper end caps, they have a little screw and you can put a little glue in it and you screw it on. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Uh. Oh, I love this bag. It is such a cute little design. Okay. So yeah, these zipper end caps, do you see there's a little screw right there? So you just fold your raw edges in and you slip it on and then you put a screw in it. All right, so here we go. I am loving the brown and the white so much. I have a thread poking out there. You know what? I am going to sew my seam allowance flat real quick here because I think that will be helpful when I go to put this all together. So I'm just going to baste my seam allowance flat along the very top of my bag. on both sides. Oh, you're welcome, Margaret. Hopefully my swap sister likes this bag. This is for my swap. I figured these colors make a cute summer slash fall bag, right? That's what I'm hoping. All right, so I just kind of sewed my Seems flat there. And then you want to find your center here and measure in, where's my pen? There it is. Did I hide the connectors? No, they're normal connectors. They're just normal. Okay. So a fourth of an inch away from, okay, so you don't need to find your centers. You are, you are um, marking a fourth of an inch from this seam here, all right, on all four sides of your bag. So a fourth of an inch from this side seam here. 
These top zipper closures are a little tricky. Sometimes mine look awesome and sometimes they look not so great. <laughs> They're a little tricky to line up at the end evenly. So I do struggle with that. Okay, so I've marked a fourth of an inch away. And where's my zipper? There it is. All right, so you want to get your zipper. I'm trying to figure out the best angle for this. This might just be it. All right. And I'm going to go face down, so right side down, okay? And I want to, I know I want my bag opening from left to right for me. So you can just unzip this all the way if you want, okay? Because I have my end cap, or you can have a tab on there of some kind. And... <laughs> Oh no, your dog stepped on the pedal. <laughs> I don't think Marley May weighs enough to do anything to my pedal, luckily. All right, so I'm starting at that mark that I made that's a fourth inch past the seam, and I am going to clip it down all the way to the end, okay? And then when I get to the end and the other mark, I want to taper it away from the other mark and the trick is to do it evenly and in the same place on both sides which can be a little tricky I think I'm not a huge fan of these top zipper closures like I'd much rather do a recessed zipper closure just because I feel like I can make it look nicer but I'm I'm determined to get it to look nice all right. The, yeah, the technique on the Momexa. That is a really cool technique. And is it this way, Chris? No, it's this way, right? Is that the way it would be? Yeah, so on the Momexa, she has you completely fold it at a 90 degree angle. And it makes it so the zipper just goes straight down into your bag, which is super cool. And I would have to pull up the, I'm too scared to do it on a live because I haven't done it on this bag before, but is that it, Chris? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it the normal way on this one, but dang, yeah, that would probably work if you did it up that 90 degree yeah, that would work. Ah, oh, you know what? I'm going to do it. So you stop and you fold it right there. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Chris, do you see that? Is that right? No, down. The other way, fold it down, not up. I'm like, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> like this, yes, okay, that's right. <laughs> yes, Chris is a designer, guys. Right? Don't you design, Chris? Yes, yes. Are we in agreement? Everybody angle down. Okay. So I'm angling it down like this. And so instead of you having to worry about taper it off, it's already angled down and it'll fold into your bag really nicely. Let's hope this works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's sew this on. I'm just going to baste it. Here we go. Yeah, that Momexa technique actually worked really well. Thanks for reminding me about that. Joe from Country Cow Designs is such an amazing designer. She came up with that one, I think. I hadn't seen it before I did her bag. So I think that is her technique. All right. 
right. Okay, here we go. There's one side, let's flip it over. So this is what I like to do. I like to zip it up, because this part always stresses me out, is having this tangled as you flip it over. So flip it over and you know that that goes there and then you're gonna flip it again right there. And I keep that in place and I take it over and I clip it. Does that make sense? Make sure that your zipper is not twisted or weird because it will be twisted down here because you're kind of turning it over on itself. Oh gosh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm dropping all my clips. Okay. <laughs> no down. I figure it out eventually, guys. <laughs> all right. This might be a little harder because I already have my... Um, Just a second, chick, chick, chick. because I already have this on here. It's a little bit harder. I may have to cut my zipper tab off. No, I got it. I got it. Okay, here we go. You just have to give it a little twist. And right at that line is where I'm folding it. I'm going to double check that that's the same. It's the same. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's so cool how many different, Chris, I agree. It's so, yeah, I love how many different techniques there are in bag making. Like, I feel like there's no one way to do anything. There are so many different ways. And the great thing is, is you can find the way that works the best for you and do it. I 100% agree. Okay, here we go. This second side is a little tricky, but you can do it. Here we go. Keep that zipper right there. Here we are. Make sure you're not sewing the other side of your bag through all of it, because that wouldn't be good. Okay. <laughs> all right. Oh, I'm sure it's the same with designing clothes and sewing those, for sure. So many different ways to do. And I don't think there's any wrong way. Oh, Lisa, yes. This technique would be perfect on the Isolina. Yes. All right, guys, I have my zipper on here. We're ready to put this sucker together. I always like to zip this up. Oh, looks good. And see, when that's all done, it's just going to fall into the bag. We did it right, guys. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Team effort. Thanks for the help. Okay. Okay. I need to lay it flat like that. All right, here we go. So we want to put this all together. All right. Yay. Now, I like to do, especially if my lining is smaller, I like to do my lining inside my exterior, which means I need to turn this out again, okay? You don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to. Thanks for the help, guys. I love it. All right. This is just my preferred way of doing it. Again, it's the great thing about all of these patterns. 
so many different ways. All right, so you wanna make sure that your zipper is the way you want it down here. And I think I will clip my tail. I like to usually clip it to something. And will it clip to that? Yes, okay, I'm clipping it in there so it stays out of my way. And I'm gonna put my, um, oh, I need to flip this. You want your right sides together, okay. <laughs> I know, I'm getting bold, huh? Doing it live, <laughs> I'm glad it worked. <laughs> Yeesh. All right, so flip your lining. Now, I want my zipper pocket to be along the back of my bag, so I'm gonna match the back and my zipper together. Right sides are together, and I'm sliding it right in there. And then we're just going to start lining everything up, clipping it all together, and then we'll stitch it all up, guys. We're almost there. Yay. Okay, I like to match up my side seams first. Okay. Then my other one here. It's really important to get your zipper out of your way, don't get that caught in your stitching as you're stitching this all up. Oh my gosh, I put the wrong seam on that one. <laughs> okay. There we go, yes. If that didn't work, I definitely would be using my seam ripper tool. <laughs> For sure. great when I don't have to use it. Okay, now I have my centers clipped here. At least I thought I did. Didn't I? I don't see them now. All right, line it up as best you can here. I usually have them clipped on the top. Is that cream canvas or water? Um, it's a it's a cream vinyl on the outside from my punk broidery. It's pretty awesome. I have been waiting for the perfect project to use it on, and I think this was it for sure. Okay, so I have this all clipped. I'm gonna sew it. I'm only gonna do a fourth inch seam allowance because again, I'm not changing to a zipper foot. If you can do a three eighths, go for it. Um, I think that's what she suggests in the pattern. Let me double check. Yeah, she does suggest a three eighths. So I am only doing a fourth. All right, here we go.
<laughs> I just sewed that piece of leather onto my bag. <laughs> I'll be getting out that seam ripper tool and using that. <laughs> Whoops, look at that. One tiny little stitch. Oh, hi Judith. We are just about done. Let me just get my little piece of leather off of there. <laughs> And sew that over one more time. Okay. All right. There we go. That's why. Ah. Uh. Because my seam wasn't pressed open, it was a little bit thicker right there. I was like, why is that so thick? And I do not want that for when I go to top stitch. So I'll just cut that open like that. All right, here we go. We are going to pull this whole thing through. Okay, Ooh, quit moving. Here we go. So I have my bottom of the bag open here. So I'm just going to pull it all through that. And let's see what I did. I'm trying to find that clip from the zipper. There it is. All right. Seriously, this is the best part. Oh my gosh, I love the brown and the white together. So pretty. <gasps> Yay. Okay. Ta-da. I'm gonna stick that all in there. Let's see what I did. <laughs> if I... Uh, messed up at all. Okay. Here's my bag. Let's zip her up. Looks good. Yay. And I can tuck that in there if I want to as well. And it lays down super nice. Well, I need to top stitch this first, but See how it just goes in there nicely? That's because I did the 90 degree angle thing and I don't have to worry about it like tapering off on the sides. That's pretty cool. Okay, so all we need to do now is top stitch and close up our pockets and we are done. Oh my gosh, I love it. So one of my biggest tips about top stitching on these main closure bags is you want to make sure that your seams, your thick seams are really good and pressed out of the way because if they are pulled up at all, it will get in the way of closing your zipper and you don't want that. So make sure those are pressed down good. That's another reason I like to do a fourth instead of a three eighths inch stitch around the top because it gives my zipper just a little bit more room around there. Okay, so I'm going to top stitch this and then I'll close up my lining and the zipper. Yeah, Maria, that, it's a pretty cool little technique, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Um, let me, <laughs> let me check my bobbin. 
How are we doing? Uh, <laughs> I think we can do it. I think we're okay. At least for the top stitch. I may have to wind a new one. Just a minute, let me get one winding. Come on. <laughs> Hold please. There we go. Come on. All right, let me get a bobbin winding real quick. Because I think that is going to be out after I top stitch. All right. All right, let's do it. Ooh, yeah, I got plenty for top stitching. I don't know about closing the rest of the bag up, but we're good on this part. Clear up my space and let's do it. All right, make sure you have your stitch length where you want it. I'm kind of going to start back here in this corner. And here we go. This is like the most nerve wracking part for me. I think for everybody, right? Is this top stitching? It like makes or breaks a bag. <laughs> Especially if you're using vinyl. I'm definitely going to need to help my foot up and over here. Okay. My stitching is pulling a tiny bit right there. Hopefully that helps. All right. And then I want to put it back under here because I don't want it to drag along the back. Okay, and then again, I want to put it under again. Also, nerves, nerve, you're using a contrasting thread and you can't really hide it, you know. But I thought the white would contrast so good on this bag. I'm making sure that my lining is pulled down and out of my way the whole time so it's not creeping up into my zipper. So just pay attention to that as you go. So I'm using my thumb down here and kind of pulling it down as I go. Almost there. All right. 
that is my top. Yay! <laughs> yeah, everybody's holding their breath on that part, huh? <laughs> Sorry, I was too. Okay, yay, it looks good. <laughs> it looks okay. I don't see any places that need fixed. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Okay, so I have this random thread right here I need to clip. If I can get to it. I need to get my nails redone. They're too long. All right. There it goes. Okay, so next I need to close everything up and then we're done. So I am going to open my zipper pocket here. I'm gonna pull this out. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, top stitching hurts my hands too. I'll have to take a break after I'm done with this bag. And look how nicely that bottom pulls up through that zipper pocket. You're going to Clip that all together and sew the lining up. Sew your pocket up and you're done. I already did my crossbody strap before I started filming. So I'll clip that on. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for your help <laughs> on the zipper thing. All right, so remember you're sewing the lining at a 5 8 so remember that when you're doing this part to stay at that 5 8 inch seam allowance okay I may have just enough bobbin for all of this fabulous all right I'm gonna trim that down and then close up my pocket maybe where's my scissors there they are no, the lining is just a cotton. It's not canvas. Okay, here we go. This is, yeah, <laughs> Sarah, this is, I if I can do it, this is my favorite way to close up a bag. I do it on all my bags now. I almost, if there's a way to do it, I do this way. It just, I like that it leaves all of my lining seams nice and that my sewn up one is the pocket. And usually you have more space in your lining to pull through the bag. Cause this pocket is kind of small. That would have been a struggle, I feel like, to pull the bag through this pocket. It was definitely a lot smaller than the lining. Okay, here we go. Yeah, guys, I am so relieved this bag worked. I always get so stressed when I do a live that it's going to be messed up somehow. All right, here we go. All right. Push that in. I hope my swap sister likes this. <laughs> okay. I am going to put on the crossbody strap. Ah, I love it. Look at that. Yay, guys. Okay. So my crossbody strap is just a 3 4 inch. I am just gonna stand up here. Don't look at my messy, my messy room right now, guys. It's really bad. Somebody come over and organize for me. That'd be great. Okay. And that is the flare crossbody. Look how cute that is. Oh, it turned out adorable. I like the um, thinner strap on this bag. I think it's cute. You can totally do a one inch two if you wanted to. Um, either one would be fine. And there's my inside lining. Oh, and it's got a full closure. People love the full closure. All right, guys, that's it. Um, thank you so much for joining my live. Thank you, guys. Um, I hope to be filming the new Tout Leger 2.0 from Country Cow. 
um, either tomorrow or Wednesday and have that up. And I appreciate all your support as always. <laughs> I hope you all have a great week, a good Monday, and happy summer. I know it's our first week of summer here. My kids are done on Tuesday, so. All right, take care guys, bye.